The feedlot originally started when there was a big drought on back in about uh, 2007 and it was getting cattle market ready. Then it just evolved from there. We were approached to get our export licence, which we did. We started from five pens, now we're up to 25, and we export into the Middle East and Indonesia. My husband's family started a transport business back in the early to mid 70s. So they've been carting about 45 years and they're passionate about it. Well, I've been involved for 50 years in cattle transport and the welfare of cattle is the, the number one thing. It's not whether it's feasible, welfare is the priority. As an industry, we have a responsibility to ensure the best welfare for the animals that are in our care. The, the animals have to be fit to load so they arrive fit and healthy at their destination. The drivers must be stockmen first and foremost and then have a good ability to drive a truck safely. Stock sense is definitely needed to identify when there is a problem and rectify it. Equipment must be fit for purpose, the correct design, there must be specially designed cattle crates, non-slip flooring, no obtrusions, uh, anything that can injure the cattle, good airflow helps lower the ambient temperature around the animals. Low effluent in the bottom of the crates because that can increase the ammonia in amongst the animals. It's very important to comply with the standards and guidelines because as an industry we have a responsibility to ensure the best animal welfare practices possible. It is paramount that the animals arrive fit and healthy at their destination. It's a chain of responsibility. It starts with the producer on property. They should be properly prepared for transport. They should be well handled, well hydrated and fed and drafted into their lines. They shouldn't have big cattle and small cattle, horny cattle and poly cattle. And that's the primary responsibility of the producer to have them well set up for transport. As soon as that animal steps onto the truck, it's the responsibility of the truck driver. Uh, and they have last rider refusal. When it comes to loading too many, they can say, no, that's enough, or that animal's not fit to load. And while in transit, it is responsibility of the truck driver. They must stop periodically, ideally every two hours, to check the welfare of the animals, deal with anything that's distressed as soon as possible. And as soon as they step off the truck, it is the responsibility of the receiver an abattoir, a ship if they're going to export, a sale yard or a private property. The cattle are prepared, they're brought into the yards probably the night before transport. They're drafted into their weight divisions, so you get your loading density right. Drafted into type, bulls not with cows, no horn or pole cattle together. And they're kept on water and feed. Um, if the trucking company requires a curfew, we'll do a minimum curfew but we'll keep them uh, on water, preferably. Just make sure the animals are full. It can depend. If you're carting cattle that are compromised in any way, like say they're droughted or they're underweight or overweight, we try to give them a minimum curfew so they're not carrying extra weight in their bellies so they can um, handle the trip a lot better, especially if it's a short trip. We have a responsibility to the animal to make sure that they are transported humanely and safely. We love our animals. We don't want them uh, injured in any way. And also they're a commodity. They're an expensive commodity. They have to arrive in prime condition. You've got to gauge every load's different and every breed travels different. And we can only improve all the time. We look for better ways to improve the livestock's welfare. And it is just, a must to improve your equipment, to comply with safety standards. When you're carting cattle and that's your life, you look after it and cattle welfare is the first priority. So everyone involved in the transport process can contribute to the safe transport of livestock by getting themselves a copy of the latest MLA Fit to Load Guide. So it's a really handy reference developed for transport operators and livestock producers that are outlined in this document. It includes a simple illustrated checklist of what animals are considered fit or unfit for loading. Key components of the MLA fit to load checklist 
include making sure that the animals are strong enough to make the journey and that they are free from any severe signs of injury and distress. This involves making sure that the animals can bear weight on all four legs, that they have had enough water prior to loading to prevent dehydration from occurring, and also making sure that the animals can see well enough to travel. It's also very important to not load animals that are in very poor body condition, that are too late in pregnancy or too young to travel. So for more information on how to safely transport cattle, you can get yourself a copy of the revised MLA Fit to Load Checklist, or alternately, if you want to find out more about your state's relevant legislation, you can hop onto the Future Beef website and search transport regulations, or directly contact your local state department.